Section 18-51B to uh, increase the professional occupational tax from $200 to $300. Uh, we, the, our regular council meeting will uh, immediately precede this hearing, uh, which we didn't anticipate was going to take a minute or two probably. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on that uh, issue? Okay, that's a professional occupational tax fee to lawyers and other professions that uh, now are required to pay at a minimum of 200 uh, it will be increased to 300 okay. No one wishes to speak on that issue. If not, we will we'll close that public hearing. It will be discussed a little later in our next meeting as well by the council. I would like to call a regular council meeting to order. This is October the 16th, 2014. And if you would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing in the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you for this evening and all that are here. We ask that you be with those that are unable to be here tonight as well. We ask that you continue to bless this nation and to watch over us and to help us tonight to make the right decisions for our city. All these things we pray in your name. Three on our agenda is consideration to approve the agenda. Do we have any corrections? Yes, sir. I'd uh, like to add under 9B the discussion and possible action to the Marietta Road streetscapes, an additional project under 9B, and I would also like to add so that public knows that under the executive session I will be bringing a personnel issue to executive session. Okay. Are there other changes? Mr. Under the consent agenda, I would like to remove Cherokee County Arts Council from the blanket approval or denial and vote on that separately. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll just remove item D, okay? And, uh, oh, you want to vote on it, all those separately, okay? Everything separately Arts because Council. of conflict of interest. Oh, I see. All right, okay. Uh, Mr. 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 I'm sorry. You just want to break that one out to recuse yourself on that. I want to recuse myself from voting on the Arts Center, but I, I can vote on everything else. Okay. Mr. Does she really have to recuse herself? Because I believe the the uh, it is only required if there's a personal vested interest. I, I actually I don't think it's probably, probably not required. technically right, but you are on the board, right? So. I am on the board. 
and we would be funding going going to. Okay. 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 Just don't let me mess up when we get to that. I got a little scratch in here. But, uh, Mr. Rose. Yes, I'd like to have a council introduce that in. Uh, and uh, it would be kind of a uh, political sign. Okay, are there any other changes or additions? Any other changes? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended, which includes that uh, council introduced items uh, number 11 as political signs, uh, the addition of uh, personnel to our executive session in which we will have, uh, be discussing litigation and personnel issues now, uh, and we will uh, remove uh, Cherokee Arts Council uh, off of their consent agenda and vote on it separately as far as the funding and, and uh, agreement with them goes. And the Mary, 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 Mary has a road Mary, state. Okay, state. yeah, and uh, possible action 9B, Mary yeah. Road uh, project, yeah. an additional project on there. So moved. Have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome all of our uh, guests and visitors here tonight. I, the first item that we have, um, under uh, 4A is the Community Policing Partnership Award uh, uh, to Mr. Casey Gotten. Uh, Chief will handle that, I guess. Mayor Hopgood, the council members, Mr. Cummins, I really I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to make this presentation here tonight to uh, Mr. Casey Guyton from Sosby's Funeral Home. Since arriving here uh, approximately two and a half years ago, I, I've been very impressed with the business community and how they reached out to the police department and assist us on a number of occasions. The first uh, situation we've been involved in here in Canton was National Night Out. We did it, started that a couple of years ago. It's been a very successful event. And to help offset some of the costs associated with that, uh, some of the businesses reached out to us and were willing to provide some financial support of which one of those has been Mr. Casey Guyton with Sosby Funeral Home. They did, made donations to National Night Out. But here recently, uh, one of our motorcycle officers was preparing to conduct a funeral escort down to Sosby Funeral Home, and Mr. Guyton saw that the officer was wearing what we refer to as an external vest carrier. It allows the officers to wear their vests outside of their shirts but the vest itself looks like a shirt itself. If you look at the three officers here, they're actually wearing external vest carriers. And there's a lot of advantages to that. I want to point out that they don't look like a typical SWAT flat jacket with all the magazines and extra things that officers tend to carry when they're in a specialty assignment. It looks like a regular uniform shirt. And if an officer's out here and he takes some reports and he wants to come back to the station or he's been out directing traffic for an extended period of time, he comes back to the station and he wants to cool down, he has the opportunity to take this, this vest carrier off. And there's a, there's a breathable shirt that actually we purchased separate from the vest carriers that uh, goes with the uniform. And it's really a, a unique feature and I'm not aware of anybody that's really doing that here locally as far as department wide. But after seeing them, Mr. Guyton approached us about the possibility of Sosby Funeral Home purchasing these for all of our officers. I went down and met with him. He was really, he, this is something that he wanted to do personally. And uh, he purchased the best care bird for every officer on the agency. And that accounts to about $2,600 that he donated to this police department. And, Again, uh, it's not just Sosby's, but it's a lot of the business communities reaching out. And it's been very well appreciated. and helps offset some of the costs associated with buying equipment. And as you can see, the shirts, uh, vest carriers blend right in with the shirts, so it doesn't look like it's any way intimidating to anybody out there in the public. And I sincerely appreciate Casey doing that. And we'd like to, to reach out with him and, and present him with a community-oriented policeman partnership award. 
and it says to Mr. Casey Guyton, Sosby's Funeral Home, for purchasing and outfitting all sworn personnel with external vest carriers. Your generosity and support of the Canton Police Department and our employees is greatly appreciated this 16th day of October 2014. Casey, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very much. The uh, next item on the agenda uh, is a proclamation we have. Uh, we have a young, uh, young gentleman here, Wade Whitfield, who will be receiving this proclamation for Red Ribbon Week. And I think we've done this in the past few years anyway so if you would come forward I will uh, read this and then we will present this to uh, Mr. Whitfield whereas communities across America have been plagued by the numerous pro numerous problems associated with illicit drug <coughs> use and those that traffic in them and there, whereas there is hope in winning the war on drugs and that hope lies in education and drug demand reduction Couples with the hard work and determination of organizations such as the Young Marine of the Marine Corps League to foster a healthy, drug-free uh, lifestyle. And whereas government and community leaders know that citizen support is one of the most effective tools in the effort to reduce the use of illicit drugs in our communities. And whereas the Red Ribbon has been chosen as a symbol commem commemorating the work of <coughs> Enrique Camarena drug enforcement administration agent who was murdered in the line of duty and represents the belief that one can make a difference. And whereas the Red Ribbon Campaign was established by Congress in 1988 to encourage a drug-free lifestyle and involvement in drug prevention and reduction efforts. And whereas October 23rd through the 31st has been designated National Red Ribbon Week, which encourages Americans to wear a red ribbon to show their support for a drug-free environment. Now, therefore, I, Gene Hobgood, Mayor of the City of Canton, do hereby proclaim October the 23rd to 31st as Red Ribbon Week in Canton and urge all citizens to join me in this special observance. Yes, sir. agenda package are the uh, minutes from October the 2nd uh, council minute. I'm sorry, did I missed one. Yeah, we already, we already passed that. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Didn't want me to now. I missed two or three last time. Uh, the October 2nd minutes and the October 2nd public hearing minutes, uh, are there any changes or corrections to be made to those? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. We have a second. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. All members voted for the motion. Just for the record, Gene, I didn't vote. I wasn't here. Okay. Uh, all members with the exception of Mr. Russ. So we start a quarter there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Under our 10 minute public input period, we have uh, uh, two people signed up uh, Jim Busey. Uh, you can come forward. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, ladies and gentlemen, driving to this council meeting this evening, I was stopped by law enforcement and advised I had exceeded the <coughs> posted speed. I asked, where is the speed posted? I was advised that the new limits have been approved, but not yet posted. I was also advised that I could be given a summons, but that would be up to someone else to decide. Yes, what I described is an analogy. Unfortunately, that is how I learned of the new campaign site ordinance as discussed at last council meeting. 
I want to make two points. Based on definitive, definitive information that appeared in the Cherokee Tribune on October 9th, and in good faith, I have removed some of my signs that may violate this new ordinance. Secondly, I am responsible for the location of my campaign signs. If they are in the wrong location, it's my fault, and I take full responsibility. Let me caveat that last statement. I ask the council to think about the possibility that once the new sign ordinance takes effect, someone could reposition a campaign sign and place it in a location that violates the ordinance. The reason for doing that could be accidental, mischief, or for some political reason. I ask the council to provide a remedy in case that situation occurs. Thank you for the time to hear my views. Thank you. Uh, Pat Bell. Good evening, council members, and those of you present this evening. On behalf of the Canton Main Street program, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce you to a valuable new member of the Main Street team. This is Daniel Hendrickson. Daniel has been interning with us for just a little over a month now and has quickly become a valuable asset to Megan Griffin, our overworked <laughs> and so dedicated Main Street director and to the entire board. Daniel came to us as someone who wanted to volunteer as he had with the Funk Heritage Center. Coincidentally, we were looking for someone to fill a Main Street budgeted part-time intern position. So Daniel's interest became a win-win for all of us. Daniel is exceptionally bright and dedicated to his job. In fact, I would go so far as to say about Daniel's brightness, his accomplishments would make many of us, even those of you sitting on the dais, feel like underachievers if you just read his resume. He has already contributed to the Main Street program with many creative ideas. I am certain that many of you have already met Daniel and have spoken with him at City Hall or while he's been around downtown. But if not, please do make a point to stop by, stop by the Main Street office, visit with Megan, tell her what a wonderful job she's doing, and introduce yourself to Daniel. Daniel, unfortunately, will be headed off to college next year, but we are very fortunate to benefit from his talents while he is with us this year. I just wanted to introduce you to Daniel, welcome him to the Main Street program and to the city. Well, okay, the, uh, <clears throat> under the uh, consent agenda, that's not what I have on the public input, under the consent agenda, uh, I would, uh, I will read these if there's any that need to be pulled off, then we will do so in addition to the, uh, Cherokee Arts Council out of item number D. Uh, item A, approval of classification compensation study uh, memorandum of agreement with Condry and Associates. Uh, item B, approval of SCADA system change order for reduction of $86,000 in cost. Item C, approval of a 10 inch and larger tap fee at 42350 I would I would like to pull that one off and, and discuss it further. Uh, item D, approval of funding agreements with Canton Tourism, Tree Commission, Downtown Development Authority, Squares of Regional Library, and Chamber of Commerce and Historical Society. Uh, and then we will, we will vote on the Cherokee Arts Council separately. Item D, uh, approval of change order of 15000 for emergency replacement of pipe valves and valves on Marietta Road. And item F, approval of annual update of capital improvements element and five-year short-term work plan for the impact fee program. Are there any others that need to be uh, pulled off? I'm, like I said, I want to uh, pull off the 10-inch and larger tap fee at this time for further discussion. I move to approve all of them. Okay. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. All right. The the reason I, I wanted to uh, uh, have some concern about the approval of the 10-inch uh, uh, 
tap fee at this point, and, and the the concept here is a tap fee at forty two thousand three fifty, which is the same as an eight inch. Now, it, it's the purpose of tap fees, as I've understood them always, has been really to assure that we have the infrastructure and the plant in place in order to. Uh, have the amount of water that a, a particular entity needs when it needs it. In other words, we have to have, a, uh, if we have someone that needs a million gallons of water a day, we got to have a million gallons in a plant that is almost dedicated to them, basically. It's got to be there when they need it. The purpose of uh, the monthly fees and, and uh, sewer fees and water charges and stuff like that basically covers and should cover in my opinion the operational cost and general maintenance to the system but not necessarily to the plant the tap fees basically are dedicated or should be dedicated to the uh, 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 plant now uh, 8 inch we have at 42 350 and we did not have a 10 inch water line okay a uh, an 8 inch uh, water line, uh, according to the information I can get with, with some very general guidelines, uh, if you were to assume uh, a very low uh, gravity, low pressure at, at six, cubic, uh, 6 feet per uh, flow of velocity, uh, would do about 57,000 gallons per hour, okay? which would mean about a million three gallons a day. So you can imagine if it were opened up completely, it would be quite a, quite a, bit, of, uh, quite a bit of water coming out of that. Uh, I guess my point here is, is that a 10 inch uh, would do almost uh, pushing twice what an eight inch will do, okay? Uh, that it, a lot of times you don't think about it, but uh, you know, a, 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 a four-inch pipe will do a lot more than twice of a two-inch pipe. It'll carry a lot more water than a two-inch. So uh, it, it seems to me that we need to rethink this this 42, 350, keeping it the same as a 10 inch, as a, as an eight-inch. Uh, I talked with the Cherokee Water and Sewer Authority, and and what I learned from them basically is that for an eight-inch water tap. Their, their latest charges are like $204,000. But what that includes now, they purchase, or out of that is purchase the uh, meter, the meter box, the backflow uh, preventer, and I guess whatever it's in, and, uh, and that sort of thing. They don't even install it from what I understand. But uh, out of that $204,000, according to Rick Dobbs with the Cherokee Water and Sewer Authority, the cost of that equipment is about, uh, about $34,000 which means that if you th subtract $35,000 from $204,000, you got about what amounts to a tap fee of $169,000 for an 8-inch. So, and this is, this is directly, or should be directly related to what they have to have in a plant, what it costs to build a plant new in order to provide that amount of water for, for the demand that, that, is, that exists. So what I, what I would like to suggest, if it's not an absolute emergency at this time, and that is not, is that we look at this and rethink these one more time and that we really get a real good comparison uh, between what we're doing and what the county's doing on that. The Cherokee County Water and Sewer Authority has, has done a, a pretty good job for quite a long time with their tap fees and their plants and, and uh, always had a lot of money to seem like to spare there more than, more than we have. But uh, I don't want the city to be shortchanged on this tap fee. And I'm afraid unless we really take a second and a much closer look at it, that that, that might be what happens. But that's just just my opinion mr. Mayor. yes um, of course we know the volume going through these two different pipes has a significant number of variables that sure. impact how much water is really taken out uh, I looked at it slightly in a simpler approach because we don't have a 10 inch tap fee and 
without getting into how high up the water pressure, the resistance that the pipe itself creates, and all of these other issues, and the user that might be doing it, I took a simple solution for arriving at an interim possible price for a 10 inch tap fee and do, until we do a complete review of all of our tap fees. And I used the simple calculation of the area of a circle and took the percentage difference between a 10 inch pipe, assuming that they were both flowing at the same rate and an 8 inch pipe, and it's approximately 50% more area on a 10 inch pipe than on a 8 inch. And if we were to use that as a basis for establishing a temporary fee, that fee would be approximately $66,800. Uh, I think it's going to take us longer than the short period of time to when we get the first request uh, to develop or to review and develop a better rate structure. And I would suggest if council so chooses to do that we establish a 10 inch rate based on just that simple difference of the area or the flow through. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The question I would ha have is that the 42,000 is a huge difference between the 200 that you mentioned. And then uh, do we see that same uh, large gap in uh, the other size pipes, the eights, uh, fours? Or is it that much difference in what we charge versus what they charge? I understand they get, they, the county gives them more than what apparently we do as far as equipment. Not wait, wait, the 204 out of that, they have uh, uh, specifications that they require, and I, what I understood from Rick Dobbs was that they actually order that equipment uh -huh. out of that $204,000. And that was what, about 100 But the developer then, whoever's doing this, actually does the tap and, and the, uh, you know, installs this stuff. But it just sounds to me, and then I might have just missed, missed it in the conversation, is that all our tap fees, water tap fees, are grossly underpriced. Yeah, the, the only thing wrong with what Mr. Cummins says, I think, and it seems to me, is that his the, the assumption, and, and what he's done is taken, you know, the, the, the area of the uh, 10 inch and the area of the uh, 8 inch and looked at a percentage difference there, but the only problem with that is it assumes that that tap fee for an 8 inch is good. Right. And, and it may it may weigh it may be well low. I don't yeah, know. Well, I mean, compared, I don't compared know. compared to the county, it's way low. It's way low. It doesn't make any difference whether it's in the city or in the county. It costs the same to to get the equipment. Yeah, I, I I still would like to see us it, it, even if since they're they're not knocking on the door at this time that that we start to review those. If something comes up and and the the uh, that they have to have an answer in the next whatever day or two from a particular time, we I think we could call a special meeting and do exactly what he said and do that. But I'd like to see us hold off. No, don't give them that price at this point or anybody, I don't, not just them, but anybody, but whoever. Should we not check uh, maybe one or two other places just to see who's out like Woodstock or whatever? Well, I don't even think coming here. Do they have a ten inch? No, they don't have a ten inch. Does does I mean, that, 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 that 204 is an eight inch fee. Wow. You see. I'm assuming we don't have any people. Well, I don't know. We don't. We don't have any on ten. Uh, the normal. We anticipate there's going to be a request for a ten inch. What was your ten inches Well, it's a big operation. Does the hospital have ten inches? The issue. The issue is, if I may answer, the issue is the hospital. Uh, and it's not the hospital itself, it's uh, that they're going to be, as time goes on, expanding medical office buildings and other facilities that would run off of this line. 
So what they are doing is in anticipation of down the road development having sufficient water flow to all of their facilities. The initial, uh, if you look at a hospital for example, there's a way to compute a table. I mean it's just a rough uh, uh, use in a hospital and this does not include irrigation or any kind of refrigeration systems or any kind of cooling systems but actual usage within the hospital consum consumed water is 350 gallons per bed per day. Per bed per day is what they estimate uh, or as you know as, a, as an average on a chart. The, the reason that they want a 10 inch is that they're going to be tapping into that 10 inch line in the future. Now that would give us time completely and I, you don't have to set it as the mayor said we could do a special call meeting and set that fee but they're trying to zero in on what their costs are going to be we could say your first 10 inch tap or your 10 inch tap right now is this but it's going to be changed and review all of our tap fees prior to the construction of these additional units in that area and it could be a changeable fee or change at a later date. And it, at some point in time we're going to have to give them a price for that tap. We don't have to do that today. No, but it's getting very close because they're bringing in the plans. I think you're looking at a January start actually in the ground. Are we going to make money on every gallon of water that flows through that 10 inch pipe? But again, is Are we going to make money on the, on, the, on the water? Well, we're going to get our standard rates for the water, but, but do again, we, that's not for the expansion or the available, as the mayor said, the capacity of the plant. Yeah, but do we make money? I mean, we, we have a net charge to the hospital over what, what it costs us for the water? Well, in 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 practice what you try to do in your water and sewering bill billing is cover the cost of your operations not be a profit center is what you're saying so we don't try to make money we try to cover the costs of those of all the operations. all oh, oh, i'm thinking about is gillette's made billions giving away the razors and charging them four dollars a blade so you know maybe we should lower the tap fee get them to use a lot of water and should make it time forever because you only charge the tap fee once right we only charge a tap fee once. I, I, I think we should, I agree with you, Gene, but I think we need to do a little more study on this if we have the time. Gene, Glenn, do we have the time or not? Well, we're going to have to give an answer to Northside. Do we have 30 days? Do we have 30 days? Probably not on the first one. I mean, they're going to be, Gene, well, I'm going to have one 10 inch tap, right? Are, are, are you suggesting that we go to once, once we've paid for a 10 inch tap, I mean, we're not going to be able to go back and... Right. No, but let's, let's look at it a different way. If we charge, let's say we could charge $200,000 to the, to, to the north side for that one tap, that one first tap. You set a precedent. The next guy that comes along that wants a well star comes along, wants to build a hospital up here or something, I don't think they can, but the bottom line is you got to charge them to it. Maybe that's not, right. that's not the right number. Maybe that's not the right number. Do we know that? Are we comfortable with that's the right number? No. Then we shouldn't. No, do I, this. I would, we shouldn't. I, well, then we shouldn't approve this because if you're not comfortable, we're not. We're, we're, not, we're, 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 not, we're not. We're not going to approve this, then, right? Well, that's what Gene is saying. Well, I think I think we ought to immediately begin to take a look at that uh, uh, other jurisdiction, including the Water and Sewer Authority, to be honest with you, okay. and, and because because they do surround our system, you know. And so I mean, Glenn, I we can be good. They're going to run a 10 inch line and we can always say to them, I'm sorry, we can't give you a price for that tap. Yeah. Today. Today. Right. But, 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 you know, if we had to have an emergency, whatever, we could, we could, if they got into that, we could do that. But I think you want to be comfortable with the number because you're going to have to live with it for a long time. I, I agree with what, what you said, uh, uh, John, is that, uh, you know, this is not really about uh, the hospital. It's you know, about the tap fee for a 10 inch line right. and cover. Whoever comes in is what it's going to, it's got to be uh, uniform. That'll be the same. But we got to look at, if, if, if we have this type of gap in a 10 inch pipe, we probably have the same gap in the other sides of the pipe. Oh, 
I can tell you the church. Not, it's not right. We need to we need to come up with a 10 inch just to satisfy Northside, but we need to look at all of them. All right, we go. Glenn, how did that one problem occur on Route 20? That one business that went in the head. That was an eight inch. So yeah, I know that, but I mean. If you compare an eight inch for that one business compared to north side for a ten inch, there's some disparity there that doesn't make sense. They had most of that was fire. They would, it, it would essentially pay the same fee. Think about that. See, that makes got, sense. if I might, Mr. Mayor, the, there's the complexity of the size of the line. It goes into two. It goes into two different types of use. There's the what I call the continuous use or on-demand use, which is like a hospital. It turns the faucet on, the water runs out. There is sizes of lines that are committed to what I call event usage. And event usage is, for example, a fire suppression system, sprinkler system. Uh, it, that requires, in certain cases, an eight-inch line to disperse in a very short period of time an event a massive amount of water to suppress the fire. Now you could have 10 or 20 of those 8 inch fire suppression lines within the city but you're not going to have 8 or 10 continuous events using it making those demands on the plant capacity. So the, all of these things as the mayor suggested we really got to relook at how we price because the incident you're talking about required an eight inch line for a fire suppression system in a building that had only two bathrooms on a continuous use so the event requirement was for an eight inch line for which we were going to charge forty two thousand or whatever it is three hundred fifty dollars for event usage and that's compared to somebody that's going to have a continual or on an on-demand usage. How would the Northside Hospital have an event that could be suppressed by a 10-inch line? If that particular business, you know, I'm serious, you get down to the nitty-gritty here, is that the bottom line, if that guy had to have an 8-inch for that fire event suppression, if there was a fire at the Northside Hospital, how much do they need? They can't do it with one 10 inch line. Well, they can, and here's the reason why, because the assumption you're making in a huge building is that you've got the fire going throughout the whole building at the same time. Usually that suppression system kicks in where the fire starts, so you've got all the event going to that one location within the building. You're not, you're not running your, your, in that event you're not running every sprinkler in a, in a five or a six story building if the fire's on the third floor in room 206. It's gonna set off that sprinkler system in 206, not throughout the entire hospital. Well, in any case, I think if, as long as we're not holding up Northside, if that's the one company or entity that could be uh, affected, I think we should put this on the work session for next week. Uh, yes, ma'am. It's my opinion that we don't have enough data to make this decision tonight. Uh, I'd like our city manager to collect some data from two or three counties and two or three cities that are comparable to ours, bring that data back to our next work session, let us um, ponder it then with possible action that evening. Okay. Uh, are we going to make it a, have a vote on the work session for that item? Possibly. Well, we, well, we could. Yeah. I mean, okay. uh, we certainly could at that point. Uh, under, under, uh, if, if there's pressure to yeah. okay. move forward. That's good. Okay, well, let's just do that then. We'll okay. do that. We'll put together a comparison of other areas. It, it, it will be somewhat complex because of it's, uh, it's like comparing, it, somewhat will be a comparison of a stripped down vehicle. And when we start looking at an eight inch line, as a stripped down vehicle in one locale because it doesn't include all these extra things to an eight inch fully loaded vehicle in another locale. So it's it's gonna be a little hard to generate apples to apples here, but we will put something together for you. See, Northside's already gonna ask for two more stories on that building. 
from what the original thought was. Well, my response to them is going to be that uh, if they need a 10-inch line, they need a 10-inch line, and we can't establish the taffy at this particular time because council needs, we need to review it and make a decision, or you need to make a decision on what review we come up with, okay? All right, let's uh, move along. Uh, we now we have uh, the approval of a funding agreement for the Cherokee County Arts Council. Do we have a motion to approve that? Motion? So, I have a motion and second. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those no. All members vote with the motion with exception of Mr. Perlow staying. Okay. Um, okay, under old business, we have second reading and action on the ordinance to amend the Canton Code section 18-51D to increase the professional uh, occupational tax from 200 to 300 dollars. This is what the one that we just had the uh, uh, public hearing on. It's, uh, uh, you know, I have a, a discussion on this. Well, I was going to add a request, respectfully request a motion to amend the Canton Code section 18-51B to increase the okay. professional occupation tax from 200 to 300 dollars. Okay. okay. Do we have a motion? So it's moved. Second. Second. Okay. Now, any discussion? Mr. Goodman. Uh, I just wanted to bring this up once again. Uh, what, to my best of my recollection, we uh, actually increased this fee $100 last year from, from $100 to $200, I think. And uh, I'm pretty sure it was last year. And now we're increasing it another $100. It just seems that uh, I, I just think that. Uh, Another tax, and I just hate to keep passing the tax. Um, I think it might deter some of the businesses from moving down here rather than encouraging them, and taxing them. And what to say? We're not going to go up another hundred dollars, another hundred dollars if it just continues. But we can't. We can't, we can't go four hundred. Four hundred is the state max. Yeah. Huh? You could go up. Yeah, you could go up another hundred. I believe it was. But uh, you know, I I know we're trying to encourage businesses to come in, and it seems like we're. If we just if we went up two years in a row, it's not encouraging. I know we can't bind future councils, but we won't do this again next year. That's all I can say. I won't anyway. Any other discussion or comments? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. no. All members vote for the motion exception. Mr. Goodman voting no. Okay, discussion and possible action to reduce waste removal fees. Uh, we had talked about this uh, at a meeting briefly, I think one or two meetings ago, uh, in that uh, when, we, when we talked about and decided to uh, continue with waste management as our uh, garbage uh, collection service, and that uh, it appears that based on the bids that we had that we could reduce without affecting very much our current budget the uh, waste fees for those who are now paying I believe sixteen fifty, which is every one every residence with the exception of uh, seniors who are paying less but the actual senior rate charged to the city actually went down so the the uh, the city would be making a little bit more on, on the seniors than they were, but uh, uh, you know they'd still be. They'd also be making a little bit more on the uh, 1650 if you left it the same. So you know, I, I feel like that you know where we can in a, uh, a fund like sanitation or water or whatever, we need to try to. Uh, take some of this burden off of the taxpayers and the property uh, and the uh, fee payers in that situation. Um, but, you know, I think that's over for discussion, Mr. Russ. Um, we will have a automatic reduction based on the fact that we will no longer be collecting for the recycle bank. So it'll be about 60 to 70 cents per residential right. collection. I would like to, to see this possibility I think both Ms. McGrew and uh, Mr. Hoffman have 
talked a lot about blight and trying to remove blight from the city of Canton. I would like to see the two dollar, full two dollar reduction in uh, October of 2015. And during the next year, the extra dollar thirty that we would have given in a two dollar reduction be set aside funds for removing the blight so we will never come to this council without funds to remove blight from the city of Canton. And in J October of 2015, we give a full reduction to everybody and we'll have the money. The city will look better because of that one year of collecting that extra dollar 30 per resident. Mr. Huff? Yes, I'd like to make a motion at this time. Uh, the 1650, <clears throat> I do uh, agree that we need to take uh, the $2 that are there that can be made available to use to help clean up our city. And that is, as just Mr. Rush had said, the area of blight. But So I'd like to make a motion that we take the $2, put it into a separate escrow account with those funds to be used to help fund the cleanup of our city. So the, the motion is going to be a two-part motion, Mr. Mayor. And the one is the $2 to go into an escrow account a clean up in part B would be that uh, we uh, request that the city manager, the city attorney, and possibly our uh, police department, who's a head of code enforcement, to uh, review all the ordinances and to modify it where required to enforce and remedy the blighted areas with the funds that we uh, have in escrow. Uh, that's the motion. Now, I'd like to go and just uh, do a little, tell you why I want the motion uh, to, to, to go through. One, it's going to... Can, can, can we, can we yeah, do I the motion a, and second? Yeah, and then you have a second. Two minutes, minutes. I need a second. Yeah, second. Yeah. Okay. Except, yeah. can I just clarify one thing, Okay, You said $2. That means that, that the, uh, the 70 cents is still going to be reduced and we're not, we're going to take a full two dollars for this fund. We're going to take a full okay. two dollars for Thank the you. Fund. I seconded yeah. that motion. I have been, this past couple of weeks, I've, you know, I've been talking about a list <coughs> of uh, rentals to try to register them. I've been talking about business license, trying to control them. What I've been trying to do is find a strategy, some tactics, in order to get a better control on the subpar housing that surrounds our city or in particular in our downtown area. Uh, I've been receiving more phone calls than I've ever received, more emails. Uh, I have uh, just other cities reading in the paper, in particular the city of uh, Decatur, and some of the thing, efforts that they're doing. You know, they got 33 code enforcement officers. Yeah, can you imagine? 33. We got about half right now. So after several meetings with uh, city officials, I've met with the county officials. Well, Randy Johnson is pretty sure. This one you said a half. I thought that was a pretty low blow. Uh, now, Mr. John, Officer Johnson spends a lot of time doing other things. Uh, he, he's here on court days. He does animal control for the city. And I imagine he has a few other uh, responsibilities, so he's not a full-time code enforcement officer. I'm sorry that, that wasn't meant to be that way. And John, I guess you. Well, same on you, John. His own, his, own, his own name for himself. That's too bad. <laughs> but the first step, the first step was taken. Uh, been going on for a couple of years, and that was to establish an, a new UDC code for the city. And incorporated inside of that UDC code is the International Property Maintenance Code. And this is the code that's going to give our um, the code enforcement officers the opportunity to go out and do the jobs that they so much wanted to do, but because of uh, lack of maybe the, some of the wording of the code and, and then trying to remedy some of the issues through the courts has not been efficient. So that's the reason I'm asking that the city manager, the city attorney, uh, our police chief, to get together and work through the ordinances, to modify those ordinances, to come up with the remedies to take care of this issue. The second thing we've done is that uh, 
the police chief uh, yesterday uh, posted the position for the second code officer, which is a, something that's needed. We probably need more than that, considering how much blank we do uh, have at the moment. The third issue is that we're going to have the need for some funds. When you uh, have some of these houses, and I, by the way, I got multiple pictures here if anybody would like to see them, some of the housing that is in it, there's not even a living person in some of these houses that are on the entrances to our city that we want to spend money on to make it look nice and attract people, but the first thing they see are these, and they're horrible absolutely disgraceful that our city has allowed this to go on and it's only up to this council mr mayor and you and our citizens to get this changed so how do we fund it we take the two dollars and put it in the escrow account so you have those funds you got a house that we've gone through the process it's time to tear it down it costs money to tear it down these funds will pay for that then we put a lien on the property if someday it sells, then we'll get our money back. But we've got to clean up our city. We've got to put some more beauty back into our city. We've got beautiful countryside. So uh, that's what's going on. The benefits, I think, they're pretty obvious. We talk about economic development and, and, and helping our downtown area. You've heard me talk about the blighted areas, and I'm all ready to rent a bus put the council on there with the press and drive around probably within a two mile radius of our city and show you the blight. Things that we drive by on a daily basis that we don't drive down that little street. We don't drive down those streets. I went to one that's right off this city's North Street, right off North Street, was a meth house and there were people living in it. And that's a shame. That's against the law, too. It's against the law. And we condone it by not enforcing the codes. We've got the code now. We've got it. So economic development downtown, <clears throat> this is a better way to spend money, and it's not as much. It'll increase the value, the value of all the properties. When you increase the value, what happens? We could, thank you. We pay a little more taxes. So, it also, which is a bigger issue, is it protects our citizens that live in these dumpy places. We need to protect them. That's our duty as council people. Mr. Mayor, city manager, it is our duty to protect these people from rat-infested places where people rent and we have too many people living in there. So we need to do this to stop the continual decline. If we remain right here at this level and take no steps forward, next year we'll be at this level, and this level, and this level. It's not going to go up unless we put some teeth into our enforcement. We put in the budget for the we want the code enforcement officer. We've got the code to do, to do what we need to do. The city attorney is supportive of this. He used to be a judge in this type of court, so he knows what needs to be done. So I think well, the best way to spend that $2 is to help clean up our city. Mr. One point of confusion, and I passed out tonight an analysis of the impact of the $2 reduction. The problem I have with the motion is $2.70 is being thrown around, $2 here and 70 cents there. Uh, the, the motion was just $2. $2. Uh, but I, what was the other $0.70? So we're going to reduce, it's going to be automatically reduced because we're no longer going to collect for the recycle bank. We've okay. That. So, so the, the fee will, will be set at $14.50. That, that's, that, the $2, the, the <clears throat> residents will never see that $2 except in, in removal of light. Okay. So the fee remains the same and the $2, according to this motion, will go to, if it's passed, will go to the light removal. 
Right. Seventy cents or seventy cents is going to be reduced because of the recycle. There is an analysis. How much would that be, Mr. Combs? You have one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year. Two dollars each. Two dollars each. I thought we had about eight thousand. We have six. Yeah, but you're counting seniors, and we're not doing anything on the senior end of it because the senior rate is already reduced. Oh, so we're not going to save right. it's we're not going to dollars from the seniors. No. Uh, no, it's just a 1650 okay. fee. It's approximately 6,250 residential customers, which will, per month. which, uh, other, uh, not commercial. No, there's nothing. This is what about the dilapidated commercial buildings? Right. Well, I think uh, they're blighted too. We should take the no, 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 no. Can't can housing authority building up there. I mean, if we can't clean that one. Oh, up. you clean. No, 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 no. I meant the rates. The rate reduction only affects the residential customers right. yeah. mm -hmm. that was the only ones involved in the recycle bank so okay. only those involved in the recycle bank will see a reduction well they won't they won't see any reduction if you use that two dollar they'll see 70 cents yeah the motion of right. 70 cents no there, there, no, no. Wait, 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 wait a minute wait a minute let me let me have my soapbox here just just a minute and you know <laughs> Uh, I, I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone here disagrees that we want to clean up why. But I do have, I do have a problem with cleaning up on the back of the water customers. I mean, if we want to add another, another enforcement officer or two more, let's let's amend their agenda some more, our budget, and, and do it. You, you but, but to reset the water customers, you didn't mean that. Right, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's on the same bill, but it's, yeah, it it's on the same bill, but. Yeah, they're paying the same bill, so it, it's going up, you know. Um, no, no, it's not going up. It's the same price. Well, it's going, it, it's essentially an increase if we don't need that $2. And we keep it. We need the $2. It is essentially We need the $2, and it is trash. That's, that's, that's good. That's bigger trash. Well, I mean, I, I don't, I don't expect to get too far with this. To be honest with you, on the circumstances, but I think that uh, you know, if if we if we can where we can lower fees, we need to lower those fees. If if we have to do this so that everybody pays, everybody ought to be paying for that. Uh, uh, not just not just the homeowners. Everybody ought to be paying for that. Cleaning uh, uh, well, it up. Well, 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 I think money away from what the city would make. <laughs> it's money that the city would have for the general fund. We're making sure it doesn't end up in the general fund. It's going to clean up the place. Well, one better way to not make sure it doesn't uh, go in the general fund is don't charge it to begin with. Then it won't go in there. We're going to do that in October 15th. What? Well, I, I just think, I just think, you know, we. No, uh, no we're not. That, that, what, what I, that was not in my motion. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, I, 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 I've said my piece. I think it's, I just don't think it's on the Sandy, you have something? No, I don't have a question. Okay. I wanted to tell you that while we have to clean up the blight, I'm not sure where the money should come from. To me, this smells a little bit like storm water. We've got the money. Let's use it here. Um, there's no clear-cut menu of who would receive this money, how this money would be spent. I'm uncomfortable collecting money without a list, a firm list of how this will be used and who will receive it, and exactly how the money would be dispersed. Uh, if a company was engaged to do work, how would they be paid? Um, I think we need to make those decisions first and come back to this. While Blight is number one on my list. I, I think this deserves more conversation and a few more concrete ideas put behind it and ways to spend the money and not just say, let's collect this money and spend it. Right. I don't think that's it's, it's, any idea that's what we were trying to do, Mr. Oh, and we, have, and we can it. supply you a list it's real it's easy. Yeah, no, I do Get out of order here. Let's go over to Mr. Sorry. Goodwin here. And he had his hand up. Go ahead. Well, I guess I have a little different perspective than some of you have. I certainly agree that we need to clean up the city. I mean, you know, it's it's a beautiful town. We've got a few bad spots, but you know, when you look at other cities, which I 
had businesses in many more cities around here, surrounding cities, about five of them. And um, compared to those, Canton's way ahead. But, um, you know, I, for one, am for less government instead of more. And what I see happening here is starting to, you know, you start with enough, you got one code officer, next thing you know you got two, and next thing you know you're heading toward 30. I think, I think that's going the wrong way. I think there's another way to actually do this rather than trying to force people to do this. I think that if, you know, that we, if we propose doing this and get our public behind it, that we can get people enthused about cleaning up their houses and the, the part that you have with you that, that, that you know, I know you have a real passion for this and so do all of us really. But the, uh, you know, not knowing who, who owns a lot. Well, you know, they have a registered agent. All you got to do is send out a, register, you know, a certified letter and you can find out who owns that house. I mean, it's not hard to do. Um, you can find out if it's a city or county owned person, find out that lot and you can get an actual person. So they have, an actual person has to pay that tax. But you can pay it out of a corporation too, or you can pay it in cash, and nobody would ever know. But you can send it to a registered agent and find out who, 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 who's be, who's uh, responsible for that. So I, you know, I just don't want to see us starting something that's just going to grow, grow, grow more and more government. Where we, you know, people who live live here want to be a part of this community, and I think they'll. You know, they want to do what's right, and they want this house to be looking, you know, their, their grounds to be looking nice. Mr. Cash. Yeah. I think the issue is not so much those that live here or live near here, but let's take a property that's owned by a pension fund that happens to be on LaSalle Street in Chicago, mm -hmm. and we do code enforcement, and the first thing we have to determine is whether we can serve them by certified letter. I don't even know where that's one of the things that we have to look to, into in terms of ordinances and so on. But we serve them and they throw it away. We find them, they throw it away. We tell them to go to come to court, they throw it away. The purpose that this fund could be used for is at some point in time you have monies to say, we're going to tear your building down, condemn the property, and put liens against it, and if the lien, go through the lien process, and go even through the foreclosure and sale of the process of the property with a, somebody who will ignore every written notice that they get. Uh, that, I think that's more what Bobby or Mr. Dyer had told me was the problem. Is that uh, correct statement? Pretty much. I, I don't know how many of those you, you would actually have. I think we don't. That's, I think, uh, like Ms. McGrew, I'm not sure we've got enough information to know how many are there like that. Maybe it may not be four or five in the city, and yet most of them may be individually owned. You know, I don't know the places, but and it's very easy, quite honestly, to find out who owns it. You know. Uh, you can get on the computer right now and go to the tax assessor's website and you can find the name of the owner there and address where they send their tax bill to and you can find out who owns it but but uh, you know I, I do I do agree with that we have some work to do but I I think it, I think it's important that uh, you know I, I just don't see using garbage fees for that when we have an opportunity for that particular fund to reduce it to our residents and to uh, leave it up there and then use that money for something else. That's right. <clears throat> when, when I was in Savannah, I met an attorney that, uh, he was a city attorney. He was on staff full time for a community that I can't remember the name of which one it was, but I could, I, I know I have it at home. About 60,000 residents and he said on their website was the process for co condemnation and clearing the property and he said it takes about 90 days it's very simple it's very simple and, he, and that could have I think, long ago <clears throat> yeah but I, I think we, when, when, if we were to go through that process and then came back and said we don't have the money to, to bulldoze the house what do we do then and what Hookie is just suggesting is we'd have the money there and then of course we go through all the procedures and at least at the final step you're not looking for the money to do that 
Let me just add something. I spent an hour today with Matthew, Thomas, and Megan Griffin, and a guy that I've actually been working on for 10 years to open a business in Canton is going to come down here next month. And we went over, he asked for specific information. And on the base of that specific information, we're just trying to put together a package to answer all his questions and attract him to our city. <clears throat> now, I'm challenged to figure out what route for him to come into our city <laughs> to find the best route that will avoid all this blight. I sure wish there was only one, because then I would say come in this route only, whether that be 16, 19, 14, whatever that is, uh, off 575 to come to our city. And that's, we're going to put together a great package, but I still have to, he's coming down here to visit and check our city out. And that's unfortunate that I'm, I'm left with that dilemma. One of the things also, I don't know, Hokie, if some of those properties might be uh, county properties, and at our meeting that we were invited to by the county in January up in, in remember that one? Buzz Aaron's committed to, to helping us with the blighted properties that are on the entrance to Canton, Georgia, but they're county properties, and I can t point to three or four of them. When you come in on exit 14, we can't do anything about them. It's county. So we have to look for a partnership with the county to try to help us with the same thing. So. Yeah, Mr. Hutton, try to answer some of these questions. I've had meetings with Buzz Aaron and Jared Cooper on those properties, on some of the properties right here. I've already had one property cited that's in the county on 700 Hospital Road that's a county property. So uh, I have already taken action on that. First thing Buzz Aaron said to me, you're going to have to have some funds if you want to get this done. And Jack, I, I can't agree with you. I just I don't I don't see as much blight in comparison as our city's got. If you just take the time to drive around a little bit and get on some of these roads and go down in those areas, we drive on the main roads and don't go in those areas. It's there. It's there in loads of it. And if we turn our backs on it, like has been before, because this city and talking to some of the employees that are involved in this, the reason it hadn't gone, gone forward is because we don't put any teeth in it. And I'm trying to put teeth, and you've got to have some funds. This is the way it is trash. You're talking about $24 a year. And Mr. Mayor, I think if you go out on the street and ask them, where would you rather spend that $24 at the same $24 you spent last year? Would you clean up this bike? I bet you'll get 90% saying, Clean it up. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Well, Bob White, again, still is number one on my issue. We've got to clean up our city to attract people to live here and attract new businesses and to keep our businesses that are here. I would feel more comfortable supporting uh, the funds that we're collecting taxes, fund fees from our citizens, and I'd be more inclined to support that, Mr. Huffman, if um we had a clearly defined use scale uh, the money would be used specifically for this that and the other rather than i i just would feel more comfortable I understand that, more Mr. Gruen, we can easily do that i'm just making a motion to get the ball rolling not to get into the to, too much into the weeds mm -hmm. i mean to make the motion i'm not going to give you a scale right now i don't have it mm -hmm. uh, but I, it's Mentally, I could probably sit down there and write one out real easy, but that's the reason I've asked the city manager in, in the motion to have the city manager, city attorney, police department to get in there and decide what needs to be done to remedy. And in that is where it will tell us how and where to spend the money. It's, it, that is not a problem. We're not going to be foolish about spending the money. This man will never do that. You know, uh, when, when a person gets their water bill and they look at the bottom, what they look at is that bottom number. And uh, if you reduce that by $2, they'll see that. If you don't reduce it and you can reduce it, it's essentially an increase to them if they know you didn't need that $2. After you just did a 4.5% increase on their water bill, uh, on their water usage and sewer usage on October 1st, just a couple of weeks ago. I, 
can't believe you oppose that, Mr. Mayor. Oppose what? Oppose taking this two dollars. I, I would do oppose system. taking the two dollars. I don't oppose on this twenty-four dollars a year. Way. I just right. can't believe that anybody in this council would oppose that. Okay. You'd have to recuse yourself, Mr. Goodwin. In the I don't vote. think so. That doesn't have your name on those properties up there. Your family name. Your family name. Are, are you saying those are blighted property? yeah. properties? Are you saying they're blighted properties? They could get close. <laughs> I think we've got a, a, a question too about how you define blight. Now, it is definitely a health hazard or a uh, uh, fire hazard or safety or something like that. Then it ought to be addressed. And we have the authority to address that right now without doing anything else, without raising the fees or, or anything else. We can do that. We haven't done the first one that I know of. And how much money do you have to have to do one? And once you make an example of one, I think you're going to begin to see others fall in line that you're not going to need to do that. Anyway, that, that's just my opinion. We have a motion in a second. Uh, just one comment. If this motion fails, and there's a new motion to reduce the rates by two dollars, which will really work out to two sixty or two seventy off the bill. We won't be able to go back. In other words, that's the pot is empty for that two dollars. You can't you can't go back and take it again. Meaning the the subject for that two dollars is gone because we're giving it back. You understand what I'm saying? We we can't come here next month and say we need the money for for the blighted properties because that opportunity is going to pass. When we return the two dollars, that's a question for our parliamentarian. No, it's not a question at all. No, you say you can't go back and do it. What are you, what are you going to go back and raise the price? No, you're going to reduce the price here. Right. This, well, motion, yeah, price this motion, this motion is only this, mo this motion has to fail first for us right. to come forward and, and then reintroduce another motion to give two dollars off to everybody. If that passes. Then the case closed with regard to that two dollars for use of blighted property remedy. I, I don't know. Just fact. I think from a political standpoint, the case is closed. But from a actual standpoint, whether you can do it or not, sure you can do it. Oh, well, we can do it. I mean, there's no question. But you, you don't have an opportunity anymore because you're giving it back. But go ahead. I mean, we we got to have a vote here. Let's go. We have a motion and a second uh, on the table. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Wait a minute. What was Did the motion? Vote? No, I didn't vote because the motion was well, what? To, to his motion. His motion was his motion. You, you seconded it. And you yes, didn't I did. Vote, but he, but you, why would you vote no? I did. You voted for it. Oh, okay. He voted for it. Well, it doesn't matter. If I vote for it, it's split. You, you decide, Jim. Yeah. If I vote for it, it's split. Two, two, two. Two, two. And now, of course, I will vote no. Motion fails. Well, that doesn't prevent us from doing something and taking charge and doing something because they're, they're, they're Mr. Mayor, would you come back and tell us what to do? Do my best. No, I want to, I want to hear you come up with a better idea. How about rental car tax? <laughs> That was cute. Yeah, and you know you were opposed to that as a, because yes. we didn't yeah. have a. I just can't believe. Right. I can't believe that the mayor w would oppose cleaning up this city. He, he think anybody that. that's in the right yeah. mind understood yeah. that that's not what I said. No, that's no. not what I said. I said well, that's, that's how you. That's how you voted. Can that's I not what you said. How you voted. Can I ask you? Can, can I ask you a question, Mr. Mayor? We're going to have on that, sir. Can I ask you, Mr. Mayor? Can I ask Ms. McGrew a question? Sure. Sandy, I didn't understand you were very ups un uh, uneasy with the decision. Do you didn't like it? I, I, I didn't understand that. You just said that. We have a problem, but we don't have a, a solution that I'm happy with because we don't have a clear-cut list of exactly how this money would be spent. We're taking money from our citizens and saying we're going to clean up life, and we don't have a clear set usage of what's going to happen. We just voted it down. You so, asked me why I was unhappy and I'm answering your question. Oh. So would you please get that list and bring a solution to consider it's your number one objective? I would like that's, to that's work a, on it with you, Mr. Huffman. I'm, I've got mine. You work by yourself. We got the oh. discussions over. We're moving, oh. We're moving to the next item here. Please. All right. Uh, 
back to Mr. Huffman, you're up again. Discussion of registration of rental housing yeah, properties. Can, 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 I, can I stop? Do we we got we to we we do something else here. Okay. Because that failed, he was trying to set that aside. It doesn't mean we affirm the fact that we are going to really reduce the rates to dollars. We got a new motion to do that. That's right. So we have a motion to reduce the fees by two dollars. <laughs> you gonna keep them up there? I don't think we're ready to do that tonight. I think it needs some more discussion. Okay. Okay. No motion. So we will. Yeah. Rates, the rates are going to stay. Rates, rates will stay the same, except, for the, same for, except for the recycled bank reduction. That's it. That's all. Well, recycled bank is, is included in the rate. Is that not correct? Yeah. So it's it's gonna, there is no reduction. The rate is sixteen fifty unless you change it. That's the point I was trying to bring. Your your the rate that we charge the uh, customers is currently sixteen fifty. The proposal or requested analysis was based upon a two dollar reduction to a rate of fourteen fifty. Even though we are currently not staying in the recycle bank program and saving seventy cents on our costs, there is no separate line item billing that's so, so it would, would have been just the seventy cents that's, would have that's been, where we I really would have been reducing our dollar thirty or dollar whatever. So tonight we had a vote to not use the two dollars to clean up the blight, but we didn't reduce the rate, so we're going to keep the two dollars uh, for the time being. That's correct. For the time being, that's I'm continuing to you and well, that, that struck me otherwise to bill at sixteen fifty. Yeah. I think we decided or we asked to bring that back up at the next meeting. Right, that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll bring that the possible that. reduction up at the next meeting. Now, we'll see that that's on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay, the next item. Mr. Huffman, rental housing property. Actually, I should have pulled that off, Mr. Mayor, because uh, this was the plan to try to help that. Okay. Uh, you made yeah. a two-part motion. I did make a two-part motion. Anybody opposed to our looking into it? Because that was the second part of the motion. The second part of the motion was to ask Mr. Cummings and Mr. Dyer and our police chief to look into how to look at the ordinances to how best remedy the situation. Well, I, think, I think we would ask that anyway, but that part, if that was in the motion, it failed. Right. Well, now I'm on the part. Now I'm on the second part. <laughs> That's not necessary to make a motion. We just need to ask them to do it. Yeah. To take a look at it and bring us the information. The attorney. Work session. Okay. This ordinance. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. I will assist the city attorney with whatever staff is required to work with. Okay. I just wanted to add one point. Uh, this afternoon, I got a call uh, from a resident who's a property owner. And uh, in the course of the conversation, I came up with one very serious concern I would have about anything to try to force uh, property renters to register. If they have to get some sort of an annual registration certificate and pay $100 per year, that implies that if they fail to do that, their license will be revoked and they would, have to, they would no longer have a right to rent that property, is my, my assumption that that's what it, uh, if, if you if in the course of they're doing business they violate our rules or whatever you pull a license they can't get licensed guess what they have long-term leases with their renters for a year two years three years and they are in a very awkward position of having to break the lease because they are no longer have the right granted by the city of Canton to rent their property out now I think we're trying to help Main Street but I didn't think we were trying to help the lawyers on Main Street because I have a feeling we'd have a flood of lawsuits because of that problem that everybody would have that is forced to comply with their rules for an annual license and they, as a course of business. It's never going to sync up with the annualized rental uh, uh, license that you might be charging. You might rent your property in February and guess what? And you're always going to be out of sync, even if you only do annualized contracts. So I, I think that's a real slippery slope that we would get into, and we have to look at some very serious issues before we do. I'm not saying I disagree with what you're trying to do, Hookie. I just think that might be a very poor choice of doing it. And 
it was just an idea that came up while I was talking to this resident, and he hadn't thought of it. And I thought, well, that might be a, an overwhelmingly negative issue. I think I think uh, the way I the way I do that is registration is different than licensure. I think license if you license them to do it, I think you're absolutely right. But if you require them to have a registration, I think if they don't register, then I think you just got a citation or something like that to them come because I don't think you can stop them from renting their property. Well, I think the only thing you might want to consider is registration might might be no charge at least the purpose would be to at least know who they are right it's so, in the old code but they have to register <clears throat> but we're not enforcing it exactly because okay. somebody from somebody walked down there and told them don't collect that information anymore it wasn't necessary okay well it's just something we have to look into thank you yeah, thanks um <clears throat> Okay, item 9A, discussion and action on resolution to submit 2015 Livable Centers Initiative grant application. Mr. Cummins? Yes. During the retreat and also budgeted was $30,000 to do a uh, city market analysis. Uh, the trees are by no was facilitated by a representative from the ARC who suggested that we try to obtain monies from the ARC to, to do this. And we currently have an LCI area in the city and in order to apply for monies, we need a resolution from council. So declaring that we want to apply for a grant, the grant would have two tasks, or if we did this full study, would have two tasks to prepare a central city sub area master plan and prepare a central city market analysis. The total expenditure would be $130,000. The city's portion would be the budgeted $30,000, and the request would be for the $100,000. We need a resolution before they'll consider the application. So we're, I'm asking for a motion to make that so resolution. We have a second. We have a motion and a second. Now, is it a 20% match? It's it's a minimum of 20. Of okay. 20%. Okay. We got a little bit now, bigger. Than 30, than 30, on our part. And it well, down there, uh, if it came back that the total cost was 120000 and they granted us 100000 we could only have to contribute 20000 But we do have 30000 budgeted. So we're allocating, uh, we're asking for the total of 100000 and we're exceeding the minimum that they require. Okay. That's something we really needed, didn't we? We need to move forward with that and get that underway up and hopefully uh, I feel pretty good that the grant will be successful with the ARC there. So, uh, are there any other, is there any other discussion? Was there a motion second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, mo we moved in second, right? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, we did. Yeah. Yes, yeah. second. Yeah. yeah, we did. Okay. Right. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, no. All in favor vote for the motion. Okay. Uh, under the new business item B, discussion possible action, Marietta Road Project Edition. Uh, yes, I'd like a motion to approve an additional project on the Marietta Road streetscapes. I'll give an explanation before you make the motion because uh, I've passed out a handout. As everyone knows, we are currently uh, paving Marietta Road all the way to John Pettit, and it ends there. We have in the budget for fiscal year 2015 funds to complete that to the four-way stop sign from John Pettit to the four-way stop sign and including that intersection was planned to pave it. The current contractor, which was the lowest bidder on the project currently underway, has offered to do that at the same $76 a ton. It's a total amount of $31,876. Our best guess, if we approve this now, we could have 
upwards of twenty thousand dollars savings rather than remobilizing later in the fiscal year to do it the reason that we're at uh, we're doing this on short notice is because the contractor is ahead of scheduling on the paving we had not anticipated that they would be so far along and they are ready to do it now if we do not approve it tonight they will demobilize and we'll have to go back and repeat this process at significantly at relatively significantly greater expense so i'm asking the council to consider approving 31 876 60 to finish the road all the way up to the four-way stop including the intersection do i have a motion so moved. i have a motion second second, second. okay uh, any other discussion uh, let, let me ask one question is, is this this would be a separate contract and not a, a change order to the other right this because is this is all that this is a separate contract because the original project was split with dot uh or gdot uh this is all city funds this particular project okay any other discussion if not those in favor signify by saying aye aye opposed no all members voting for the motion okay uh council introduced topics uh, do you have anything else yes under okay. city sorry. manager i do have a few things on me look back there first thing I'd like to is recognize our CFO uh, we have gotten from the government finance officers association uh, a certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting uh, I'd like to read it if I might. The Certificate Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting has been awarded to the City of Canton by the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada for its comprehensive annual financial report. The Certificate of Achievement is the highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by government and its management. The award of financial reporting achievement has been awarded to the individual's department or agency designated by the government as primarily responsible for preparing the award-winning uh, CAFR. This has been presented to Nathan Ingram, Chief Financial Officer, Finance Department, City of Canton. And I think it's quite an achievement to, be at that level of reporting. The other thing I'd like to bring out at this time is that we have received our insurance, annual insurance premium tax uh, in the amount of $1,238,288.52. This is $63,000 above our budgeted amount. There's a money hooky. Uh, next make thing. A motion or have somebody make a motion. Go ahead. Uh, the next. And then you get your $2 reduction. The next thing I'd like to bring out is we have a resolution from Mandy Ballinger, District 23, <clears throat> recognizing and commending the City of Canton Police Department and its officers. I could read the whole thing, but it's for. Uh, the community, I'll just read the first one of different things that they have done. City of Canton uh, endeavors to provide the community with capable and reliable public safety. The last thing I would like to say is a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of Facebook and everything about water billing and timeliness <coughs> of posting. Uh, the general procedure in the past, although it had not been necessarily 100% adhered to, is the date the payment walks in this door is the date received in the water and sewer billing department. 
uh, there are three methods or three basic methods of payment that we accept. We accept walk-ins and that is posted immediately, has always been posted immediately. There are credit card payments. They are posted immediately, whether they are via the credit card system or whether they are via a telephone phone in of the credit card. The third method is the mail-in system. The mail-in system could have had date delays in it. It was possible to have it. It was not very often that it occurred. We have implemented a new procedure whereby the, when the mail comes in the front door, whether it's done through a bank and they send a check to us, or you send a personal check to us, the envelope is dated at the front desk where mail is separated and distributed to the department. All payments will carry the date of receipt and that will be the posting date. That means any delay that's noticed or overdue is not due to the city procedure. It is the date it is received here. If the post office holds it for two weeks, we can't post it. If the bank and most banks do hold it, a total of seven days or it takes us seven days to get to us. For example, on the 14th, we opened an envelope and from Wells Fargo, which contained multiple checks, and all of those checks were dated October 7th. So, but anyway, everybody should be aware, our posting date is date of receipt in this house, not three days later. If we can, for some reason, cannot post it the same day, it still will carry the date of receipt. Sounds good. That sounds good. That seems to resolve that problem, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> do you have anything else, Mr. No, Cooper? I'm fine. Thank okay. you, sir. Uh, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. How, how, about, how about the mayor's report? We, uh, I don't have anything else on that. Oh, no, I, well, I, okay. Councilor Goose Adams. Political yeah. signs. Mr. Rust. Um, I would like to make a motion that the city manager instruct the chief of police to withhold pulling any signs and enforcing any political signs that may proceed to be violations until 19 days from now or the day after the election. That's a motion. Second. Any a second? We have a second. Second. Okay. Do we have uh, any discussion? I have something to say. Yes, go ahead. Well, you know, I, th I think uh, since we all have gone through this process uh, and um, I spent four years on the UBC and anybody that thinks I don't want to see that enforced is absolutely wrong. I wouldn't have spent that time if I didn't want it enforced. However, I think you got a 600-page document that's not posted on our website and we're trying to encourage people to run for office and then you throw a 600-page book at them and say, find the code that applies to political signs. I think last year it was a little bit more gray. This year it's a little less gray, but it's still gray. There's no clarity to what we're trying to do. It's unfortunate that the attempt to enforce the UDC came after one candidate had signs up for a month. Immediately when the second candidate puts up the signs, there's an attempt to enforce. There's a human cry by a, a council member who used that grayness last year to make sure his signs did not get removed, and this year he's crying to make sure in the same gray environment that the absolute black and white, which it is not, and it should be enforced. So I'm saying right now that's a real unfortunate situation, and I'd say that in, 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 uh, in terms of fairness, you've got to pull, instruct, I'm asking for the city manager to instruct the chief of police to not enforce that until day after the election, and next year we'll make it very clear. 
kill that. I have a motion in second. I'm just going to be Yeah, man, if I may make a comment. Uh, I personally do not believe that I should be in a position to tell the police chief which laws to enforce and which laws not to enforce. That is a decision of the police department and the police officers to determine the severity of anything as to the infractions they do enforce, the infractions that they give warnings, the codes they enforce, the codes they don't enforce. They have to make selective decisions because we probably have lots of violations that can go unnoticed because or not addressed because of the priorities of more serious violations. So I do not think that this is a good thing to do. I am in concurrence if the chief chooses not to enforce this, I do support him under the basis that there are three different sets of rules available to the public relative to this particular issue and we have set precedent in this council by pulling back the enforcement of our parking regulations, which I concurred with because we didn't have 50 spaces available, but I just don't think it's the city manager's position to tell the police chief what to enforce and what not to enforce. Does he work for you? Does he work for you? He does. Well, who did he take, not, who, who did he take instructions from then? Us, the council? No, or he takes instructions from written ordinances and laws. Well, that, that, I'm glad you brought that, that parking issue up because we had a rule in effect. October 1st, we are going to start enforcing parking. But for obvious reasons, we decided not to enforce that. Same issue. Who told him not to enforce that? That. Who told him not to do that? We, we decided not to do that. But who told him not to do that? You I say. believe, I'm not sure. He just come here and listens and takes instructions from listening? I was not present at the time of that. I just said that I concurred with that decision. I did not make that decision. I concurred with If you had been here, would you have told him to do that? Not to, not to issue tickets. He's waiting for instructions. You can't ask him to not have somebody tell him what to do. In this particular situation, in general, I agree with you. Well, but the first thing, uh, if I can, might clarify that and let me go a little bit further. That decision should have been made in the middle of September. For some reason, uh, the communications of that project not, or that street not being finished was not conveyed properly through the channels in order to make that a, a timely decision. I would have, if I had been there, would have, and if I had known in the middle of September, brought that issue to council. My recommendation would have been to enforce, actually, because we had given them plenty of time. But again, I would not instruct. I would let the police chief determine what is the most critical violations that he needs to enforce. He cannot enforce everything. It's impossible. He's got three cars flying by a police officer. One doing 90, one doing 80, and the other doing 70. I can tell you right now the one doing 80 and 70 are not going to be enforced. The one doing 90 is. So that is the selective process and choice of, an, of a, an accredited officer enforcement, not of a city manager who doesn't have that. Attention. Okay, if, if, if this motion, I have two questions, and if this motion were to pass, what happens to it? Nothing? Uh, and, I, and if you say, police chief, go out there I and enforce the law, if you say to the police chief, use the codes, enforce the law, and he says, you know what, I kind of agree with these guys, it's great, I can't do anything. Well, what, would you, what would you want to do? I would, if you pass this motion, I will instruct the police officer to use his normal 
sworn duties to enforce the laws as he is capable of doing on a cr most critical basis. And I call question, let's vote. I have a motion and a second. And you want to repeat that motion? <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to instruct the city, I'd like to instruct the city manager to, to uh, instruct the chief of police to not enforce <coughs> anything regarding signs, political signs, until a day after the election. Okay. We had a motion, we had a second. It'll be a little late in the day, the day after the election, you know, so somebody can get a chance to get them up. But go ahead. Yes, there's, there's a motion. motion. I'm saying aye. Aye. Okay. No. Motion carries. Only the only concern that I have there is is you know, well I, I guess that puts it back with the city manager. I was going to say, you know, uh, if we left it without the city manager instructing the police chief, it would be difficult, in my opinion, to put the police chief in a position where when people called and complained about a sign being somewhere, I mean, what's he going to tell them? I've got to go chase that speeder, or I'll deal with it. You know, I mean, I don't know. So, anyway, that's where we are. Thank you. Okay, now, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the executive session, discuss uh, litigation and uh, personal issues, and we will not be coming back out to... Uh,